The government has set out a new agenda for itself as it enters its second term in office. Speaking at the reopening of Parliament just over an hour ago, President Tony Tan Keng Yam laid out broad goals and strategies with a pledge to work with all Singaporeans to address their concerns and aspirations. There will be a focus on the social sector, efforts to enhance retirement adequacy and ambitious plans to leverage technology for a greener environment, as well as more transport options for an increasingly dense city. Pointing to Singapore's increasingly diverse society, Dr Tan also called on citizens to keep Singapore a place where people of different races, religions and backgrounds can live together harmoniously. And even where views diverge, it should not pull society apart. At 50, we are still a young nation with great promise ahead. Just as our pioneers overcame formidable obstacles with grit and determination to build today's Singapore, we too must create our Singapore of tomorrow. Our work continues. To build a fair and just society, regardless of race, language or religion, to achieve happiness, prosperity and progress for our nation. These are the founding ideals in our pledge, which we must always uphold. Outlining the government's agenda, President Tan said Singaporeans will get more options to unlock the value of their homes in their retirement years. It's been an eventful first half for this government's term, with major reviews in areas like the economy, healthcare, education and social services. There's clearly much more work to be done as the president lays out the government's plans moving forward. One broad goal is to enhance the country's social safety nets and enhance the retirement adequacy of Singaporeans. Dr Tony Tan said attention will be paid to vulnerable Singaporeans, including low-wage workers and the elderly. He hinted at further moves to come to ensure Singaporeans have peace of mind in their twilight years. To ensure that they have enough for their financial needs in their golden years, we will improve the existing CPF savings and CPF life annuity schemes and develop more options for Singaporeans to unlock the value of their homes in their retirement. Home ownership will remain a key strategy. Home ownership has made an enormous contribution to levelling up our society. It has enabled Singaporeans, especially the low income, to build up significant assets and have a tangible stake in Singapore's progress. No other country in the world has done this. Dr Tan said the government will continue to keep housing affordable and in line with another goal to support strong families and communities, there will be new housing options to encourage extended families to live closer together to strengthen family bonds. There will, however, also be new strategies as the government moves beyond home ownership and workfare to enhance social safety nets here. Healthcare needs are already being addressed through initiatives like the Enhanced Community Health Assist Scheme, expanded use of Medisafe and increased subsidies for outpatient care. In the area of education, Dr Tan said there will be different pathways to success. Acknowledging the intense competition in schools, he said no single point in the country's education system will determine the future of children here. And recognising a changing environment where skills become obsolete more quickly, Dr Tan said the government will continue to invest in lifelong learning. We will focus not only on low-income workers, but middle-income Singaporeans and professionals, managers and executives, PMEs too. Two new training institutes have been built to support this, the Devanaya Institute in Jurong and the Lifelong Learning Institute in Paya Labour. Dr Tan said government spending will go up over the years. The task is to ensure that social spending is sustainable. He said that government spending alone will not ensure a wealthier, better or happier society. What's needed is for it to be matched by individual and community efforts and initiatives. Active community involvement engages the human spirit, provides personal fulfilment and strengthens our collective well-being.
This is how we will build a nation for tomorrow. A home where we feel a sense of responsibility for one another and not just a sense of entitlement to the benefits of citizenship. In line with this spirit, Dr Tan said citizens will be given the means to help themselves because personal responsibility and effort are essential to their dignity and self-worth. Our reporter Olivia Seong joins us live from Parliament House for the reactions to the President's address. Olivia. Yes, Christine. Well, President Tan has laid out the broad direction that the government will be going, that the government will be taking going forward. And key strategies include strengthening social safety nets as well as improving the quality of life for Singaporeans. And to discuss more on what we have just heard, I have Mr. Cedric Fu, MP for Pioneer, as well as the chairman of the Government Parliamentary Committee for Transport. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Fu. Thank so you. maybe just to start off, President Tan has said that the reopening of uh, this parliament session comes at an important time for Singapore as uh, we celebrate you know 50th birthday next year how does today set the stage for Singapore's future to 2015 and beyond indeed I think uh, next year is Singapore's 50th birthday uh, it is opportune for us to reflect on the last 50 years uh, as President Tan has said the immigrant society that we were uh, the spirit the Singapore spirit the values the greed and the determination that 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 pioneering generation has given to Singapore. Right, and uh, another challenge that he raised is the increased demand on infrastructure. And he said one way to address this is by having more transport options. So as the GPC Chair for Transport, what do you hope to see going forward? In the earlier session of this parliament, the government has invested $60 billion. It has made a very firm commitment. And I think when this rail network is doubled uh, as a result of this, uh, most of our transport woes will be addressed. Uh, but this takes time. So in the meantime, uh, there is also the bus services enhancement plan where about a thousand buses will be put into our roads. And what this means is greater frequency, uh, less crowded buses, and so forth. And of course, greater convenience and better travel experience for our commuters. But is there anything new you hope to champion going forward? Uh, there's one subject about cycling. Uh, increasingly, we are seeing cyclists taking to cycling as a mode of transport rather than as a recreation. So they often conflict into pedestrians because they ride on pedestrian pathways. So it's an area which I hope LTA will address uh, because the pathways are just not broad enough and they run into each other. So the status quo needs to be changed. Well, thank you for those insights, Mr. Fu. Uh, that was Mr. Fu, MP for Pioneer and Chairman of the Government Parliamentary Committee for Transport. And looking forward from today, the government, uh, the ministries will be submitting their proposals and plans in support of the President's address. And in the week after that, MPs will debate what has been said. For now, it's back to you in the studio, Christine. Thanks, Olivia. That was Olivia Seong reporting from the Parliament House.